So my last cruise with the adult only cruise line, Virgin Voyages sucked. It was horrible. At least as horrible as a cruise vacation can actually be. I like to compare it to bed wrestling. Since we are talking about the adult only line, as they say, even when the bed wrestle is bad, it's still overall pretty good. Now, before I get into the details, because I want to explain exactly why I have this opinion, why I didn't have such a great time with Virgin Voyages on board the Scarlet Lady, I do want to preface this video by saying that as of right now, Virgin Voyages is still in a close second for my second favorite cruise line, competing with Carnival, Royal Caribbean being the first. And I have sailed with them four times now already, and I will continue to sail with them down the road. So originally, I had no plans to sail on a specific sailing with Virgin Voyages out of my Miami. I was trying to book the brand new NCL Prima out of New York City, but unfortunately due to a technical error, everything fell on its back. So I had to pivot and thanks with the help of my travel agency, my sponsor's touring plans, link in the description box below if you want to book a cruise, they were able to pivot and find something that worked out for the specific dates that I had set to cruise. I had already flown my girlfriend Lauren out, we bought the flights for me to head to New York, for Lauren to head to New York, and well, we had to pivot because of these changes and the only only cruise that was available was Virgin Voyages, so I bought an additional flight for her to fly down to Miami. I canceled my flight and took a travel credit, and I do want to say that none of this beginning part was any of Virgin Voyages' fault. I just want to give all of you the context of the entire situation. It just started out kind of rough. So upon arriving to Port Miami, keep in mind this is the largest cruise port in the world, however I do have to admit Port Miami is extremely organized. It was a rainy day, however my girlfriend Lauren Lauren and I got dropped off at the port and we dropped off our bags. Well, I did. Lauren decided to carry hers on because she had a small carry-on bag and she didn't want to lose anything. Now, little did I know at the time, this would soon turn into a nightmare. Overall, the boarding process was smooth, easy, and we got on quicker than we had expected. Our boarding time was like 1.30 and we got on at about noon, which I thought overall was pretty cool. But when we got on board, things seemed pretty normal at first. It was just a little bit of a lighter crowd, a little bit more of an older seasoned crowd because we are no longer in peak season. By that I mean summer. All the kids and younger people are back in school and college. So it is understandable that the vibe isn't exactly going to be what it once was during summer or springtime. From the sail away party to the events that led later on that evening, things seemed a little bit lower in energy than I was expecting. The sail away party, it seemed like they didn't have the staff that they normally brought out. They made it fairly quick as far as their process. But I didn't really pay much attention to anything as far as the differences from the previous sailings until later on that night when I noticed that my bag never made it to my room. We had a pajama party and unfortunately my Spider-Man jammies was in my bag. So I couldn't really do much of anything as far as going to that party. So I went down to Sailor Services, that's customer service for Virgin Voyages, and I told them the situation. Now at the time, thankfully they weren't busy over at customer service, but they had me sit down while they tried to resolve the matter. Then about, and let's say 45 minutes of sitting down, they told me to just go to my room and they'll contact me whenever they hear something. Something. However, it wouldn't be until the following day that I actually would. Now, the only reason we even heard something the following day, because I didn't get a phone call, nobody came to my room at this point in time, was because Lauren, she was kind of fed up. This was her first time staying with Virgin Voyages, and she wanted to experience all the things that I had told her and things she had seen on my previous videos. She was excited, so she went down to guest services herself and talked to the management over there. Now, they said they had not found my bag, they had no idea where it was at the time and keep in mind this is all of my stuff in there swimming trunks underwear all the stuff is still in my bag so Virgin Voyage just told Lauren to go back to the room they did bring up some robes for us they brought up I believe it was two shirts one for each of us because they didn't know the full situation if it was my stuff in there or both of ours in there and they also gave me a $100 credit which I thought you know at the time was Pretty cool, but that was until Lauren decided to go buy some stuff for me. She wanted some swimming trunks so we can go to the pool, relax, and hang out together. Lo and behold, the lowest price for swimming trunks of my size was $140. To me, I still think about this. What kind of un-golden plated, non-Gucci pair of swimming trunks are $140? There is no way I would pay that price. Maybe some of you out there would, but 
Basically, I paid 40 bucks on top of the credit for some swimming trunks. I then took it back because Lauren brought them thinking that, well, you know, this is what we're going to have to deal with for now. But for me, I was like, uh-uh. There, there ain't no way that's happening. So we took the shorts back and I said, you know what, when we get to Cozumel the following day, I would just buy some there. So the following day, we had our first port of call in my favorite cruise port of Cozumel, Mexico. Since I hadn't heard anything about my bag, I decided to go shopping over there, buy some shirts, some underwear, and I bought some swimming trunks as well for a lot cheaper than $140. Upon arrival back to the cruise ship, we were exhausted, so we decided to take a shower and prepare to take a nap. And whenever we decided to open the door for the shower, the shower door broke. Now, I will admit, Virgin Voyages was pretty quick about responding to the issue. There was rust all over the door and well they came in and brought somebody in and fixed it I want to say within a couple hours so I wasn't really complaining about that however things did progress as far as worsening the next day so the following day was when the poop really started to hit the fan and everything just kind of came into I guess you could say like an end or a conclusion or a resolution however you want to look at it so the following morning Lauren and I woke up to water dripping from our ceiling it wasn't a lot however it was a couple of drips I want to say like maybe every minute or so so we called down to sailor services again and they came and responded I want to say within about an hour or so to take a look and they said they would bring be back to fix the problem now at this point, this is now two problems that we're dealing with. However, whenever that attendant was actually there to check the issue with the, the water linkage, they asked me and Lauren if we had left the door open. And I'm sitting here thinking, I guess there is a worry about some type of condensation coming from the air conditioner or something of that nature. But I said, no, Lauren and I, we stepped out of there for two seconds at seven in the morning. It was now, I want to say around like 8 a.m., 9 a.m., but we do know proper cruise etiquette you close the door because you know we were sailing at the time and oh I didn't see that as being an issue but they said it in kind of like an interrogating way like are you sure you didn't leave the door open I'm like no I didn't I didn't leave the door open to the balcony no I, I know better but uh they came back and you know we noticed that they put like some kind of putty or something like that to cover up the leakage for me it was fine it is what it is there's two problems now that I had when it came to my cabin now I did get a call I want to say sometime around noonish one p.m. 2 p.m. something like that it was from a guy I guess that was over in port or somebody that worked for Virgin Voyages management stating that they had found my bag and what they told me kind of blew me away they said that I gave my bag to the wrong attendant they said the guy that I gave my bag to had an MSC shirt on now <laughs> Like, uh, I guess at some point it is plausible that maybe somebody could go to the wrong part of the port or something like that. Now, you're talking to somebody that goes to Miami frequently. I've cruised out of Miami several times, and I've never had an issue. On top of that, if you guys have ever been to Port Miami, you know the, the bag handlers, they don't have, other than I want to say maybe an ID, they are usually wearing those same casual white shirts that doesn't have any specific brand on them. They work for the port. They don't work for the cruise line. So you're not going to know what cruise line they work for. They told me, I said, are you sure it was a shirt that said MSC? He said, yeah. He said they had camera footage of it. Now, at the time, you know, I was just kind of frustrated at the fact that he was even saying this and basically accusing me of dropping my bag off of the guy at MSC. Now, I will admit, there was a guy that was at the Virgin Port where I dropped my bag off at. We were joking around for a little bit. He was like, are you sailing with Virg or uh, Royal Caribbean or are you sailing with Carnival, right? We laughed about it or whatever, but I gave him my information. I thought this stuff is usually foolproof when it comes to the bag handlers, the luggage guys. Typically, whenever I go over there, they confirm the cruise ship that you're going on, which is what happened here with this guy we confirmed I said virgin he asked for my cabin number I gave him the cabin number he scanned the little card or whatever and made sure I was good to go it turned green he said okay no problem we'll take care of it and that's what ended up happening now I don't know what happened in between that interaction but somehow my bag got left at the port so at that point I knew right then and there that well I'm not going to have the experience that I wanted to on my Virgin Voyages cruise. Now, I just want to reiterate, if you guys have never been to Port Miami, the MSC drop-off area, I believe it was the MSC Seashore, don't quote me on that, that was in port that day, they are a little bit of a ways down, and by a little, I mean a lot. If I remember, it was Virgin, and then there was a Royal Caribbean ship, I forgot what ship it was, and then next down from that was the MSC terminal, and then from there was a Carnival terminal, then NCL, and then there was another Royal Caribbean ship. So like I said, I'm pretty sure I didn't drop my bag off at MSC and then take a 30 minute walk all the way down to Virgin Voyages. Either way, you get my point. So later on that day, I had two men in suits, two management team members that came over to my room 
And it seemed like at first that they were actually just making sure everything was good, making sure everything was taken care of and whatnot. But in my opinion, it kind of turned into somewhat of an interrogation. At least that's what it felt like. They asked about the door first. He said, oh, are you sure you didn't pull the door too hard? And I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And with the, the leaking, are you sure you didn't leave? They, they asked me again, just like the other attendants asked, are you sure you didn't leave the, the door open for the balcony? I'm like, yes, I'm sure. You know, they go, you know, we're trying to make sure everything is okay. I felt like I was being investigated just by the tone. Because if I wanted to, I could have been, well, one of those people and started yelling and complaining. Because there is the possibility that they could have probably, after all these situations with the ceiling and the door, maybe just given me another cabin. Moved me and Lauren into another place and maybe tried another way to rectify the situation. However, I did mention on one of my other videos, when it comes to this, as somebody that loves cruising, somebody that does cruise reviews as well, and tries to give you guys the most valuable content possible i wanted to see how all of this is going to play out when it came to virgin how do they handle this situation without somebody berating them yelling at them and making demands and well unfortunately this is the result of it anyway i would later pick up my bag after the cruise was concluded so that was my cruise unfortunately lauren was extremely disappointed because she did want to have a great time and you know, it was just something that I was not expecting as far as the overall experience. I was expecting the experience that I had when I was on the Valiant Lady in Barcelona and maybe the one cruise that I took with them again this past July for the 4th of July. And Well, we just didn't get it. But I do want to say once again, I do love Virgin Voyages. And if I have a bad cruise once out of the four times that I've sailed with them, then I don't really have a problem. Oh, yeah. And I, I almost forgot, by the way. I did have an issue with Virgin Voyage's loyalty program. So they have this program, I forgot the name of it, but apparently all the crew and staff did as well. They didn't even know about it. So Virgin has said that you can rack up points with them, a loyalty program just like with Virgin or Royal Caribbean rather with their crown and anchor and then Carnival with their very important fun person. It's always so weird to say, but they have a loyalty program. And I thought I qualified after taking four cruises with them. They said, well, the cruises had to be paid. I had one of those cruises where I used what's called a... Uh, What's the term for that thing? Uh, an access key. That's what it is. I use an access key. So they said that one doesn't count. But I was on the Mermaiden Voyage, the first sailing. I paid for it myself. And I had two other sailings that was also paid in cash. And they told me that, first of all, after them saying they didn't even know about it, they said that I don't qualify. And I'm like, well, I meet all the qualifications. Why can't I have it? I'm supposed to be getting like free premium Wi-Fi and all this stuff. And then some other people went on. It was actually another passenger that, I, that knows my channel. He said he had the same issue. He's the one that told me about it. But Virgin Voyages just seems kind of, like I said, disorganized, like they are lacking in some areas, and that is my big worry for them down the road. However, I will explain in full detail what I think about Virgin Voyages after sailing with them on four separate occasions and eventually five down the road. Now, of course, when I say down the road, I do mean later on this week because I do believe it's important for everybody to get a real feel of what this new cruise line has to offer because I've been saying since day one, since I was on the first sailing, the inaugural sailing in the U.S. of the Scar the lady cruise ship that if virgin does listen to customer feedback and really pays attention to what it is that they're doing with their company within the next five to ten years if you know, according to your opinion they are not already the best they will be without a doubt one of the best out there because when it comes to this cruise i want to say aside from everything else that i had to deal with there were plans that were set on the app that just didn't happen there was a party that was supposed to happen in the red room that eventually ended up getting canceled and they didn't tell anybody about it and they didn't even have any other plans i heard rumors that there was a dj in the aft of the ship near the wake restaurant their specialty dining option but nobody knew about it except for maybe a small handful of people and according to passengers nobody showed up so there are just little kinks that still need to be worked out, and I do believe that Virgin Voyages would actually do that and correct all of these problems that they're dealing with. But I do have some other stuff that I want to talk about when it comes to the four sailings and what I truly think about Virgin Voyages so far. So make sure you guys stay updated and pay attention to that video when it comes out later this week. I'm thinking maybe like a Wednesday or Thursday, so just keep that in mind. Either way, guys, what I got, make sure you hit that like button on your way out. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Check out touring plans in the event that you want to book a cruise. And, well, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, all of you. Take it easy.